Hey y'all, it's Corey here with Everyday Man, doing everyday reviews for everyday people. In this week's episode, I would like to show you how to safely and properly run your whole home with your portable generator. And we'll get to it right after this. Okay y'all, so this year we've had a very active hurricane season. And there's a lot of people out there right now that don't have power to their homes. A lot of people in Lake Charles, Louisiana, a lot of people out towards Mobile. And so I want to put this video out to help you guys, or even in the future coming up in winter storms for you guys up north, to help you guys understand of how you can use a generator such as this. This is a 7,500 watt generator that I have, and I will run my entire home with it. Now I have an average 2,000 square foot house. I've got a four ton central air unit. I've got a, a deep freezer, a couple of refrigerators, and this guy can run it no problem. But there's a few things you need to do to ensure that it does run it and run it safely. Now, first thing you'll notice on this, this champion, it is brand new. Uh, we had two storms that were bearing down, looked like they were gonna come to Louisiana. I pulled my genera gen generator out to start it. It wouldn't start, so I did have to go buy a brand new one. But there are, there's a couple of things towards the end of the video. I'm going to show you how to avoid those issues that I had with having an old generator that wouldn't run and how to keep your generator running. But this 7,500 watt generator, it comes with a 50 amp receptacle on the front. Now this 50 amp receptacle is on two 30 amp breakers. So that's the number I want you guys to remember. We're going to cut to a, a clip right now of me showing you how many amps my home is running at present with the air conditioner running and everything running inside, including a couple of TVs and lights. Hey guys, so I just want to show you a real time amp reading of my house with my air conditioner running, everything running, two refrigerators and a freezer with 20.8 amps. And that is why a 30 amp breaker will be sufficient for what we're about to do. So as you can see guys, I'm pulling 20, 21 amps. Um, so this, thir this 30 amp breaker on this, this generator is gonna be more than capable of doing what I needed to do. So let me show you what I did inside in my breaker panel. I hooked up a permanent breaker for this inside and I'm gonna cut to a clip and show you guys that right now. All right, y'all, so the hardest part of this job is actually hooking up to your breaker panel. You want to go ahead and turn off your main first, kill all the power. Um, I have a 30 amp double pole right there. That's where I hooked up the wire going to the receptacle. Your black and your red will be your hot. And then your neutral and your ground will go to your ground bar. Be sure to turn off your power for this. Because these pieces of metal right underneath is where your breaker clips in. That is hot. That is 220. So get it hooked up and you're ready to move on. Now that 30 amp breaker inside my house, I have wired it up to a 50 amp RV receptacle. It's hardwired, okay? So in the event of a storm, all I would have to do is plug my generator into this guy and I can back feed my breaker panel to power my home. And I'll show you how I go about doing that right after this. So guys, when you're hooking up your receptacle, let's see if my camera can get in there. You can see it's labeled. The black and the red are on X and Y, and the white is on a screw labeled Y. And my ground wire was hooked to a green painted screw, and also labeled green. So that's how you want it to look. You want your black and red on your X and Y, which is your line, your hot, and your white neutral is on a screw labeled white. So guys, if you go about doing it the same way I've done it, where you've got a breaker in your house and you've hooked up to a, an outside receptacle, the next thing you're going to want to do is make a whip or buy a whip for your specific generator. And if you don't know anything about these plugs, like I know this one's a 50 amp, only because I'm an electrician, I've been around this stuff all my life. I know it's a 50 amp. <clears throat> you can see down here, it actually says 50 amp on the cover. But there are several different kind of plugs you can get. And if you're unsure or unfamiliar, simply take a picture of this plug 
and bring it down to your local hardware store. Those guys will be able to show you what you need. So what I did was I got a 50 amp plug for it and I made a whip. I made a 25 foot whip <clears throat> that I can simply plug my generator into and plug into my receptacle on the other side. This is also 50 amp. Everything's 50 amp, it all matches up. Um, but that's gonna be the easiest way, guys. Make you a whip. Get it to where you can plug your generator in. Now, my whip's 25 feet long. I can pretty much put it anywhere under this carport that I need to. Um, that does a couple of things for you. It keeps the fumes out of my garage. It also keeps it where I can move this thing around and make sure it's out the rain. Uh, if rain's coming in here sideways, I can roll this thing all over this carport with this 25 foot whip and I'm good to go. Okay guys, so let's say the power's out. Power's going out and I need to crank up my generator and get it hooked. The first and most important thing you have to do is turn off your main breaker. In the event of an electrical outage and you're using a portable generator, you have to turn this main breaker off. You do not want to backfeed to the line outside and cause any safety concerns for any lineman working in your neighborhood or your area. <clears throat> this is the number one most important thing to do is turn this main breaker off. Now, after that's off, if you've got a portable generator, I suggest turning off every load in your breaker panel. And I'm gonna explain you why here very shortly. Um, with a larger generator and an automatic throw switch, you do not have to do this. Uh, the generator can handle load, the load of the entire house coming on at the same time. With a smaller portable generator, you're gonna have to come through here and turn on your larger loads first to get those settled in and running, and then you can follow up with your house. All right, so we've got our main off and we've got our loads off. Now, the next thing we wanna do before we even think about starting our generator is plug our, our whip in. Now, with a whip like this, you don't wanna plug it in, then start your generator. Because what'll happen is people in the business will call this a suicide cord. If I have my generator plugged in and I start it, I now have 220 volts on this plug, on this male end that is very easy to touch. So let's get it plugged in. So we've got it plugged in here. Let's go plug in our generator. Okay guys, our next step here will be to plug in our generator. Now that our generator in is plugged in, our home is plugged in, now and only now is it safe to start this generator. So, Let's see. Let's see where my choke is. I'm telling you, it's a brand new generator. I'm not real familiar with it yet. Okay, so we want to choke it. Want to go ahead and start it. Okay, guys, now we got the generator running. We can head back inside. We've got it plugged in, and I'll show you how you want to fire up your breaker panel in a certain order to get everything running correctly. Okay guys, on the 30 amp breaker that I have hooked to my generator receptacle outside, you can see I've labeled it generator. Now we can go ahead and safely turn this on. Now what we have is power to our breaker panel. Now the first thing you're gonna wanna do, and I've got mine marked, is you wanna turn on the inside part of your air conditioner. Your attic blower is what I got mine labeled as. Turn that on first. Now to get your attic fan running. Now the next thing you wanna do is turn on your compressor for your air conditioner. Now I don't know if you heard it, but my generator took the hit. My air conditioner is now running. Now I can come in here and turn on all my loads. Okay guys, 
my whole house is running. The only thing I did not turn on is this 30 amp, and that's for my dryer. In the case of in the case of an emergency, uh, if I were to really need my dryer, I would have to come turn off my air conditioner to use it with the small generator. But I think we can go for a little while without drying clothes in an emergency. Okay, guys, generator is running. Freezer is on. This is the number one reason that I keep a generator at my house. I've got a lot of deer meat that I want to last. All right, y'all, when you're running your portable generator, go ahead and turn that air conditioner down as low as you possibly can. You wanna leave your air conditioner running, let your house get cold. If that compressor unit starts going on and off, you can mess up your generator or cause power surges. So let your air conditioner run, guys. You're burning gas anyway, let it roll. All right, y'all, as you can see, refrigerator's on and it's cooling. Um, now, one thing I'll tell you, a pro tip, is use LED lighting. LED lights will be a lot easier on your generator than using incandescents. I can turn every light on in this house and there won't be an issue. All right, y'all, so I've showed you how to set up your generator, how to get it cranked up, and you can run your whole house on a 7,500 watt generator. Um, I've just showed you, it's really not hard to do. But now I can see the linemen outside, they're giving me the thumbs up, power's coming back on. All right. So what we want to do now is we want to do the exact opposite thing we just did. Okay? So I'm going to show you that. Stick with me. We want to come in here and turn off all our load. Boy, you take that AC off, you can hear that generator make a big difference outside. Okay, so our load's off. So we're gonna head out to the generator. We're gonna shut it down. You probably wanna let it run for a few minutes, give it five minutes or so, let it cool down, then we can, uh, we can turn it off. And then, and only then, can we safely unplug our, uh, our generator. All right. So we've got our generator shut down. Now we can go ahead and unplug it. We know that even though we got power back at the house, our main is still off. All our loads are disconnected. There will be no power on this plug when we go to unplug it. Okay guys, so we know the generator is safely unplugged. Our generator breaker is in the off position. We can go ahead and turn our main breaker back on. After our main's on, we're back on commercial power. We can go ahead and turn all our breakers back on, except for our, our generator. We never turn this on as long as the main's on, ever, ever, ever. Very important. We don't wanna, we don't wanna, uh, power up that plug outside, unless we were actually gonna plug in a RV or something. All right, y'all, we're back on commercial power. The storm has come and gone, and we can run this generator as long as we need to, as long as we keep fuel in it. Now, that's the only pain about having a portable generator. You gotta keep fuel in it. Now, they do make kits where you can hook them up to natural gas, but you have to remember they will derate them. It won't be 7,500 watts anymore, okay? So I choose to run mine on gasoline. I drive around enough I can go find gas usually. Um, so the storm has passed, and we want to set this generator up. And we want to set it up where we can use it next time, where it will start next time. One of the most important things you can do is use Stabil. 
Okay, these carburetors, if you let that fuel sit in there too long, they'll get gummed up. Stable, we'll keep it in operation. Another thing that's really easy and cheap to do is use a battery tender. I got this one for about $20 on Amazon. I will put a link down below. In fact, I'm gonna put a link for everything down below that I've used, including the generator, the wire that I used, the breakers, the receptacles, everything. I will have in the description down below. So if you wanna do it, you can do it the same. But like I was saying, this battery tender, it was $20. You plug this into your battery on your generator, keep it plugged into your wall, you'll never have a dead battery, guys. And it's really as easy as that. Um, all in all, I, I ran the wire, I hooked up the breaker, I hooked up the receptacle literally in about an hour by myself. Um, it's really not hard to do to set yourself up for success when dealing with a portable generator. And guys, if you, if you know anybody that needs to see this video, please share it. I've been an electrician for a long time, man, and I've seen some people hook up their generators in really unsafe ways. And I can assure you, this is the safest way that I know how to hook up this portable generator. Guys, if you're still here and you like my video, man, give me a thumbs up. Think about subscribing. And like I said, please share with this with anybody you think may need it. This is something a lot of people need right now, so please get this video out there. And guys, until next time on Everyday Man, I'll see you.